What is up, Internet? SB here for the Marduk Report, and we are finally back from CES 2020, and we're not sick this time. So, huzzah. First up is XPG, and XPG is a sub-brand of Adata that has now gone full-fledged into PC components with everything that they had at their booth. And this giant orb thing with the 49-inch ultra-wide curved monitor that you could sit in and game was the first thing that you saw as soon as you walked into their suite. And it's real big. And that system up in there in the corner is what was powering uh, all of the gaming goodness on that 49-inch ultra-wide. But first up is the Invader, and this is XPG's kind of budget entry level case. Uh, it is, I think, going to be around $70. Uh, don't hold me to that, but it's, you know, a nice kind of basic looking and basic in functionality mid tower case. There is a lot of RGB going on, so it may look a little bit crazy, but it's really nice. Yeah. After that, though, is the Battle Cruiser, and this is a step up in their case lineup. This is also a mid tower ATX case, but it is going to be a lot more robust. As you can see, it's got USB Type 3 along with a Type C port on the top. It's going to have tempered glass on front and side panel, and also they're working in conjunction with Bits Power to make distro blocks for it. So if you want to get your custom loop on, that's going to be the move right there. And it's going to be coming in black and white. And if you're wondering about the tempered glass front panel, it's going to have this gap on the side, and there's a very fine mesh on front of the fan. So even though you have tempered glass on the front, you're not going to be choking off those fans. And they're doing RGB 24 pin cables because why not? But really the star of the XPG suite was the Volta. And I'm sure you've probably already heard of this, but it needs to be said that this thing is crazy. This is a full tower case and I put the heaviest quotes on full tower. It is about a meter tall, so just over three feet can hold three dual slot GPUs in vertical formation. So this is the backside with the four fans. There's actually on the other side, there's another GPU with a, the motherboard, which is right here. The entire chassis slides out on rails, so you can actually get to all the components really, really easily. No word on price point, but I would assume that this is gonna be you know, four to 500 bucks. Uh, on the exterior edge, because it's round, so there's no real front or back, but there is actually an okay IO uh, selection as well with USB 3.0 and Type-C ports. Also, XPG was showing off the Pearl drive, and this is one of their new NVMe drives running on PCIe 4.0, NVMe 1.4, and it is fast as hell. This, as you will actually see, is running at over 7,000 megabytes a second and over 5,000 megabytes a second on the right. Um, the seven, over 7,000 was on the read, uh, and it's super fast. They also had some RAM that they were showing off, which I think we've seen this before. But XPG also brought out a couple of concept DRAM modules that will be pushing 4,800 megahertz and up to 32 gigs per DIMM. The modules will look similar to what they already had, but those are some real fast speeds. On top of that, they also brought out a pair of NVMe, uh, not NVMe, solid state drives uh, that are portable. And these will push 2000 megabytes per second from what I'm told. And yes, they are RGB. Wouldn't be getting into gaming components unless XPG was also doing AIOs. So XPG is not actually making these. They are combining powers with Acer Tech for the actual cooler and NIDAC for the fans. These actually look pretty solid. Um, NIDAC makes pretty decent fans and Acer Tech makes pretty, pretty much every AIO on the planet. So yes, I'll take uh, one of each. And they're gonna be in the 240 and 360 configurations. XPG, again, getting into everything they can. Um, they're gonna have two power supplies All right off the bat, uh, the core reactor, and I believe the other one's just called the core. This one is at 80 plus gold, fully modular, and will come in 650, 750, and 850 watt variants. The other budget model, which I believe is just called the core, is going to be uh, 80 plus bronze and not modular at all. XPG also brought out their newest keyboard called the Summoner, and this is actually going to be a full-on mechanical keyboard sporting either cherry silvers, cherry blue, or cherry red, and as you can easily see, full RGB. So, what the really cool thing is though is this thing. This is a Summoner that has been gold-plated with 24 karat gold on everything. 
well not the wrist rest the wrist rest i don't think has been gold plated but all the key caps and the entire top plate are aluminum that has then been gold plated with 24 karat gold this keyboard cost ten thousand dollars moving on up next is the precog headset and this is actually a pretty nice looking headset and it has electrostatic and dynamic drivers so the audio in this is actually pretty solid i gave the listen off of that DAC um that is pictured there and this is actually the inside of the driver the chip is the electrostatic uh driver and the obviously the round piece is the dynamic driver uh it's full metal on the top so all the adjustments that's actually metal all that chrome bits is not plastic it is actually metal i'm just gonna assume aluminum alloy all of the connectors can be removed so make it easy for travel the ear cups do rotate flat even though i did not rotate them but it does make it feel quite comfortable so this is the xpg headshot ultra lightweight mouse that weighs like 60 grams or something crazy um and the entire top is 3d printed which is pretty cool with a really kind of intricate lattice structure to make it still very sturdy while remaining incredibly light the interesting thing here is that they are actually considering 3d printing uh the entire top lattice section for gamers that is custom fit to their hands um no word on whether that program is actually going to start up but if it does that is going to be really cool so that you can get a mouse that fits perfectly for you and because it has this lattice structure it actually does squeeze in a bit and they did put a side uh button in the in this side lattice piece so you, can, you can see me i'm squeezing here xpg is also teaming up with intel on some nuts this is the gaia and it's going to have some xpg ram and memory modules in it and for the gamer that doesn't want all black and rgb for everything they're also releasing a number of their products in a pink color so that is the precog headset and the m20 gaming mouse just below it the summoner keyboard with pink keycaps although those are more of a coral seashell and then the battleground xl gaming mat also xpg is actually going to start making full-on gaming slash workstation laptops and this is the xena notebook this is going to feature an i9 9900 i would assume k processor and 32 gigs of a data ram along with one terabyte of nvme storage and it's actually quite lightweight even though it is a little bit on the chunky side seeing as it has a full-size LAN port on it but i picked this thing up and i was like whoa this is really light i was kind of concerned that it didn't have a battery and just like the other gaming accessories if you don't want an all black laptop xpg's got you covered with anime waifus i believe this character's name is mira this is the xpg photon monitor 27 inch ips but this model is the 1440p version and it has got features on top of features on top of features so the main feature that xpg is pushing on the photon monitor is something called vivid color eye safe display technology and basically what that means is that it is reducing the blue light that would actually harm your eyes but a very small section of the wavelength so i think it's something between like 460 to 480 nanometers like that's that slice of 20 nanometers is actually reducing that wavelength of blue light so that the monitor still looks great but it's not going to harm for your eyes you're not going to need to wear gunner optics or put on uh, reading mode you will be able to disable this if you really want to um, but you don't have to so on the back that is a full cloth back along with the articulating arm that's the actual arm that it comes with and this rgb glowy setup because yes um full on clamp 360 degree articulation on the first two points and then yes because most monitor stands suck anyway so might as well put something on that's actually good inputs on this monitor are actually kind of interesting because they're doing nothing but type c on the back uh, and that includes for power there are five type c ports on the back of this and that's it uh, there will be some adapters that go from type c to hdmi and type c to display port but that's going to be it uh, and there are no buttons on it either the only 
buttons to can get into and control the menus is this going to be this nub on the back and that is it hope you guys enjoyed this and if you want to see more content stay tuned because i've got a lot of stuff that i went and saw at ces 2020 and i am now just getting to finally get a chance to go through it so like comment subscribe what was your favorite part of the xpg suite was it the the gaming monitor was it the insane volta case or are you a baller and it was the ten thousand dollar keyboard i wish i had ten thousand dollars to go spend on the keyboard i mean i get in so much trouble my wife would kill me anyway i'll catch you all later peace